a tier three match in this map. This this one will devolve into one of three ways. This will go down to Drake coming in and blowing down every single thing with a tsunami or a typhoon. This will come down to Lash activating Prime Tactics whenever she gets a chance because this map has quite a bit of terrain here. Or this will come in with Andy countering Drake and just healing 5 HP to all his units, regardless of what unit they are. And this is a mixture between the first and two, because I'm playing as Lash. And Mr. Trollolololol. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. But Mr. Troll over here is playing as Drake. And I have wanted to do the commentary on match that had Drake on it for so, so long. I love Drake so much. Because his, his relationship with Eagle and Jess is just hilarious. Let's talk about these two COs. Drake here, he, he doesn't exactly... He is... So in ground game, he doesn't quite specialize in anything. Like, in fact, in this one, he he doesn't he doesn't specialize in anything. What he does specialize though is naval battles. And Advanced Wars by Webb, this is the strongest that Drake has ever been. All of his naval units get 25% defense added to them. Hardly anything is going to scratch them, especially when they're on a freaking port. He also gets plus one movement on, on his naval units, but this map, it doesn't feature any naval units. So I'm going to stop talking about the naval units and instead talk about Typhoon. Typhoon is a global damage super. Deals two unit, deals two damage to every single unit on the map and it leaves rain behind. And when it comes to rain, all ground units like, they can't move as much as they can. They, tanks, when they're surrounded by planes, they can move three times. That's it. And they have six movement. Now, roads, cities, HQs, any ports and silos, they're exempt from that rule. Even the shoals. They, they still give you that one movement. It's just everything else costs movement. And his actual normal power is pretty good too. Like you definitely want to save it for Typhoon because it's two late units of damage, but Tsunami or Squall or whatever you're used to Drake's normal power being, this one being Tsunami, deals one unit of damage. It doesn't rain, but here's the thing that both of his powers do. They both drain every single opposing unit's fuel by half. So, it is very likely, or it's, hell, it's even common to see a whole lot of flashing fuel icons when going up against Drake. However, Drake here is going up against Lash, and Lash is the expert when it comes to terrain. We, depending on how many terrain stars her units get, she will get 10% firepower times however many terrain she gets. If she's on a city, three terrain stars, 30% attack power. Forest, 20. Mountains, 40. And you can you can guess everything else from there. That. So, because it's based off of terrain stars, her air units aren't going to get any buffs, but they're completely fine. All her units are at 100%, like regardless of where they're at. Both her normal power and her super will give her perfect movement even in rain. So this, so Lash is one of the COs that can just completely negate Lake Drake when it comes to ground battles like this and Prime Tactics. Oh boy. Prime Tactics, depending on who you talk to, is either really, really good, very, very underrated, or very, very bad and highly 
overrated. I'm not one of the people that says it's underrated. I'm just one of the people that says it's good for what it does. So what Prime Tactics actually does is it doubles your unit's ter play terrain stars. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that's, that's really good. Here's the thing. Terrain stars work in tandem with your unit's health. If your unit is at full health, then yeah, that's going to be really stinking good. Because honestly, that's 60% defense. Here's the thing, though. If your unit is at 5 HP and it's got 6 terrain stars, well, congratulations, you have 30% defense. Like, if your unit is at 2 health and it's on a plains with 2 terrain stars, well, good job, you have 4 de you have 4% defense. So, but here's the other thing they have to look at. Because it. it's not just the, the defense that the terrain stars get, it's also the firepower. And that's something that I feel like the people that say it's highly overrated often, like, often overlook. They focus on the defense, which I get. That's what keeps your units alive. That's what, make, that's what makes Combi so hilariously overpowered. And I'm bringing up Combi for a reason. Say that Lash takes an engagement on planes. And for, 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 for clarification, this does not include Com Towers. So say that she takes engagements on planes. That is 10% firepower and 10% defense. Throw Prime Tactics into the mix. And in Fan Source by Web, you also get a 10-10 bonus. 10 free firepower and 10 free defense. Well, Prime Tactics, that'll boost the planes up to 20% firepower and 20% defense. Add that 10 boot, add that passive boost, suddenly, you're playing with combi level units in tier three. This is and this is just on planes. Into the woods, 40 to you have 40 to both. 50 if you include the 10% bonus. On cities, 60 and then 70. On HQs and mountains, 80 and then 90. Yeah. And here's the thing, with her, with day to day, Glash can get that normally by just sticking a unit on a city. There you go, here's your combat level. There's your combat unit. Have fun. Yeah, so, and that's something that I feel like the, the overrated people overlook when it comes to firepower. And like, and like I said, firepower isn't everything, because you definitely can't. Like, you'll be able to mop up people with a fire with firepower increase. You'll have an advantage. It's just how long are you going to keep that advantage? Because defense is what actually makes the powers good. So let's go and get started on this because I have negated it way too long. And this map, this map has two airports. One on your strong and one on your weak. And speaking of your weak, a lot of players will get artillery. And why do they get artillery, you ask? Well, because of this one infantry little penguin here. Where he is racing towards the comm tower. Yep, and you can see that Mr. Troll is doing the same thing over on his weak side. It is possible to get that comm tower before the artillery is within placement, provided that you're not facing grit. Because if you're, think if you're play facing grit, don't even think about it. Heck, Colin might even be able to get with it, too. He just needs an extra turn, and you might get that extra turn because of the 20% cost. Yeah, against Colin and Grit, don't even think about getting that Comet Tower. But, um... Yeah, so, this Drake has 10% firepower now. 
And um, this trick is also going for my comm tower. And I'm just sitting here going, what the heck? So, yeah, so this is already an interesting game. Um, yeah, just look at this. Why is this a good idea? Please tell me why you thought that was a good idea. Yes, it's being backed up by a tank, but... Why did you think this is a good idea? I think it's just going to go over there and interrupt the heck out of it. And since this inventory is going to go over here and capture this city, that inventory is also going to go in and support. <laughs> because this artillery, I can't hit down over here. So, already a unit lost. Two units lost, actually. Because he sacked an infantry over here. And good on him for not moving the tank in to strike this. That was good. Because this isn't even, well, firepower wise, this is even engagement. In reality, this is not an even engagement for me. But, because I have a second tank on the way, yeah, that's, that's a good engagement for me. And you might be noticing, uh, why am I building so many mechs? Lash is one of the few COs that can utilize mechs stupidly well. That's why. And, um, yeah, there's just going to be, like, a bunch of tanks coming out from here. And I do build an artillery because I was like, okay, whoa, 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 buddy. That's my art, that's my comm tower. I'll get it soon, but I'm going to build an artillery so you don't get any, I, any sneaky, stupid ideas. And... Mr. Troll decided to build an anti-air, which, oh, that, that's fair for if it's purely because of the, the, uh, the, what you call it, the mechs. But if you bought it because of the battlecopters, there's not a single battlecopter in sight. Don't, don't waste it, because that is a tank that you could have had. Yeah, so don't. Typically, don't try to build anti-air until you see a Battlecopter. Yep, so... Slowly making my, my artillery down there, and he goes for it again! My god, and this artillery is still out of placement! Dude, stop! I am begging you, stop! He's going after my city, like, my goodness. Okay, I guess to be fair, this one is supposed to be his city. <laughs> to be fair. So, he can have that one back. Never mind. I'm gonna sack an infantry, I guess. But I see a very, very good engagement here. I'm going to take that engagement, and well, yes, this artillery is going to blast one of my tanks. Uh, the other tank will come in and deal with that artillery. Funny how that works when you're when you're on your strong side, and why you should never bring this artillery around the corner unless you have a bunch of troops to back it up. Because this wall right here, this is what allows, like, forces your, like, opponent tanks to go around this way. And you can just have other stuff reinforcing this area.
Yeah. He's starting to push back, which is not good. But I'm also starting to queen. Queen. <laughs> I'm cleaning up his opponents in the middle. I'm, 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 I'm cleaning them up. I'm cleaning them up. Thank God. And there goes his artillery. Um, I'm no longer afraid of anything that's over here on the east. It's just the west I have to worry about right now. Yeah, my strong side is doing strong. Who would have thought? And artillery, once again, out of place. Like, build artillery. Yes, they are good. But make sure your artillery is actually covering your units. Because this is not. And here's the wall of mechs. Shifting over a slight bit. <laughs> All this just for infantry engagements, too. And just look at this. Okay, so if this tank was here, no, no, here, I can understand it, but you're parking your tank directly next to a mountain, and you're facing off against Lash. Never, ever do this. Never do this. This tank, if you were so dead set against attacking, and look, the, look at this. This tank can just pull back, and this tank can go right into the fight. You are pushing so far down south that anything right here the like you gonna meet resistance I mean, if you're not then then that's some um, off on my part for doing it but you're going far down there when you shouldn't be is the thing and what you're and all you're doing is just giving me power charge you were being far too aggressive right now and I don't like it now, when I was playing the match, I loved it. That artillery is going to fire on the only thing it possibly can. And I'm going to try my darnest to actually get Prime Tactics. Because, oh my god, Typhoon is right around the corner. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to activate Prime Tactics. And I am immediately gonna start clearing out every single freaking thing. Like 60% firepower. My goodness. And yeah, I'm gonna start taking cities here. And that's a mech. I don't care. This is six this is six seventy percent defense right here. And sixty percent firepower. Seventy Sorry. And this is all without the comm tower, too. I see this and I was like, I have the defense to back it up. I don't care. And I see that this is a medium tank. This medium tank will never be able to reach over here. I don't care. And like, one HP infantry, but 80% firepower against a mech in the mountain, the forest. Yeah, mechs, they're a bit more sturdy than infantry, but this, this is a winning engagement for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna win this engagement. And I even take an engagement on the, the freaking artillery over here. Why not? So, yeah, that was 
Yeah, he suffered greatly pushing all the way down here. And he doesn't use Typhoon. Until now. He should have used Typhoon first. He should have used the first. And then fired on that. And then fired on it. If he was so hell bent on firing. But that just allows my mech to just pick this thing off. And just why? Look at this engagement right here. Why do you think that this is a good idea? Just 8 HP mech on Mountain, or Lash, being struck by 8 HP tank. It took... Look at this. That was an awful idea. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna fly out and say it, but... Oh my god. And I have... a 20% boosted artillery... in range of this tank. that it's raining because all the units are there right by me. Okay, so rain does not affect. Rain does not affect uh, in, like infantry units. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Infantry or mech units. It's purely just vehicles. Got it. I'm just going to start capping stuff. Because there's only three units here that I have to deal with. And one of them is a medium tank. It's forced to go here because of these two force tiles. And... This artillery's not gonna be able to do anything. I was gonna fire at that. I like that tank. That tank is the bigger friend. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my mechs back. And I'm also gonna go ahead and tech up. Because no, my opponent has tech up to two medium tanks. I'm gonna go ahead and tech up to a Neo tank. Especially when global damage just ended. Just why? Why is this artillery? Why is anything that's not a foot soldier or aerial unit going in this area? There's no reason for it. Like, maybe I can see a rocket going there, but no. in sheer baffled disbelief on this entire game right now. And I'm just sitting here hoping that this medium tank is just gonna fire 
on one of these trips. I'm just sitting there and hoping for it. Thankfully it doesn't. But I can start capturing my comm tower. Get rid of that tank. I can start getting my mechs back. I can damage that artillery. I can get this artillery healed back up. I can get this tank refueled. I can get a second Neo tank. Suddenly, I'm walled and backed and fortified once more. And apparently this 3 HP infantry... Okay, well, I would have gotten the city, so... Okay, fine. I'll give you that one. You can tell I was not a fan of... I'm not a fan of this game right now. But he's finally pulling back and concede... Like, he's finally pulling back here, not throwing it... Mind. But here's one other like build. Like this is a build issue that he's been having. Like his biggest thing is build order. And he built two artillery. Like this round. I have covered a game to where artillery is great. Like was used to great effect. But this is way too much. You do not want to build artillery, like, when it's super late into the game. And you do not want to build artillery when you are being put, like, in disadvantage. If you are building artillery when you're in a disadvantage state, you've lost the game. Because you have to take time to set that up. Oh, hey, I got, I got my comp tower. So I'm just going to clean everything up and then... Goodbye, medium tank. And I positioned my tanks in just a way to where... This medium tank won't be able to get a first strike on the tank. And this tank, it can come down here and harass his artillery. He's going to lose it if he does. And I bring out my first Valcopter. Because I'm looking at the map and realizing he only has the one anti-air, and it's stuck up in the corner. <laughs> and why would you go up against Glash? Like, anything, when they're on the city. Like, you got the good luck rolls on it. Yay. But, my god. And you just sacrificed this tank. You pull back both of your artillery. You built a rocket. I don't even need Prime Tactics right now. I am holding on to Prime Tactics. the only worthwhile engagements over here, and Neo tanks can do just by themselves. There's no reason for me to pop prime tactics. Like, at all. Because if rockets was the response to me building a battlecopter, then what's the point of my power? I don't care about this. Like, 
I generally don't. And his response to my second Battlecopter was a second pair of rockets. Why? Now I'm going to use... Wait, and now that it's raining, now I'm going to go ahead and use Prime Tactics. Because now all my troops have normal movement. My, actually no, they all have perfect movement. That tank. Okay, that artillery's gone. That artillery's also gone. This has 70% defense now. This one. If he wants to fire upon this, he's base locking himself. And I'm going to go ahead and take the city. And even though I'm harping on him for building rockets, I build one myself. I'm not the one that has to worry about battle coppers. I'm also not the one that has built artillery after artillery after artillery after indirect over here. I have a force over here, and he's not going after that force. I can wall up. I can fortify myself here. Because this right here is 30% attack power. And as a lash, I'm going to abuse that. And let's see what he buys. Because he fired on the tank. And look, he is pulling back. Builds a medium tank, which okay, good. But at the same time, here's a battle copter. Here's two neo tanks surrounding your base, and hey, look, you positioned your rockets. The rockets are positioned in just the way that neither of them can get that tank. This, all of this has been lost now. And I'm going to start capping his HQ. I'm just going to focus all of my attention like over here on my weak side. I don't care about the east anymore. My focus is going to be on the west and only the west. And he builds a bomber. Okay. And he is going... He is finally going after all my stuff, but... My god. It is way too late to start doing all this. And he's planting all of his stuff right by my mechs. This mech is going to go after the artillery. And it's a 6 HP mech. Oh, five damage. Artillery is gone. My rocket is safe now. Like, two HP artillery. It's going to fire on that infantry. And that, that rocket just annihilated the tank. My forces over here just annihilated everything over there. It's just a bomber that poses a threat. And I don't have an answer to said bomber. My answer is to fortify. Because I want the HQ cap. And yeah, I do in fact build a fighter to counter this bomber. Because I'm not worried about any of this anymore. My mechs have taken care of... Oh my god, I got the hiccups. My mechs have taken care of everything. And this bomber, it is able to interrupt this, but it's not able to kill it.
that was the only thing that was missing was the mech, like the infantry kill. And he didn't get it. And this is so cute. He's trying to take over my HQ now, which, okay, that's fair. You're still way too late. Because, um, this fighter is now in range of over here. This is going to join up, so it's a 9 HP infantry on HQ. Make that full HP. Both of my Valcopters have came in and walled this up, so the only thing that can hurt this is the bomber. And there's three, like there's three capture points left. And I go ahead and bring this down. Look what I have. I've got Prime Tactics. Suddenly, this bomber is going to deal nothing to me. It's going to deal one damage. And even that is a 50-50. And I defended my HQ. I even went Scorched Earth just for the heck of it. Prime Tactics, HQ, that has three capture points left. Mr. Troll has resigned. Both Lash and Drake are defensive type CEOs, but they play differently. Lash wants terrain. If you go up against Lash when terrain is in her favor, you're going to get wiped out. Your attacking force will not come up on top. Just building four indirects back to back, the only one that can get away with that is Grit. And that is purely because of the plus one range. That is the only reason why he can get away with that. It is not because of the firepower, because if that was the case, then Jake and Jess would also be able to get away with it. No, it is the plus one range. Never build indirects when you're being put in disadvantage. They stay. Build some goddamn tanks. Build some goddamn direct unit units. Because indirects take time. You need a turn or two to set them up properly before you can even begin thinking about firing. And when you're going up against like people that are barging into your base, you're done at that point. If you're going to use indirects to defend your base, use them to their fullest extent. Not like this. Not like this. I could have kept going. Like, I even defended my base. I could have pushed them back all the way back to the, like back to the cross line again. Drake is scary to go up against. He is. But his main thing is Tsunami or Typhoon. And when you have means of dealing with Typhoon, then it gets a lot simpler. And hell, this, is, this goes for Olaf too. Like if you have a way to deal with um, Winter Fury, you're good. For the most part. If you have a way to deal with Black Storm, you're good for the most part. I just could not believe just how many times like, my mechs have been able to get their 40% increase in firepower. Like just how many times they were able to do that. I could not believe that. Despite the many times that Lash has been on here, she finally has a win, though. <laughs> Good job, Lash. It only took you, uh, three, four games? 